Your life can change. It doesn't have to stay the same. You can break through to another level. You can experience a surge of God's power and grace that will empower you to live beyond limits. I want to uh, just close out this message that we've been teaching on the last few weeks entitled Healer. Somebody shout Healer. Healer. Your God is a healing God. He's a healing God. And God, you can bring a broken life and put it into his healing hands, and he can heal and restore and deliver and set free. He's anointed to set at liberty the captives. He's anointed to open up the eyes of the blind. He's anointed to heal the sick. He's anointed to heal people of every issue because he is the great physician that we were talking about last week. When you go to the doctor, this doctor sends you to this specialist, and that specialist sends you to the other specialist, and then the other specialist sends you to the next specialist. But you know what? Your God is the great physician. He specializes in everything. There's nothing that you can't bring to God that he doesn't have an answer for and a healing touch for. So I want you to turn with me to Isaiah 53. We're going to read verse 1, and then we're going to skip down and read verses 4 and 5. This is a prophecy given by the prophet Isaiah 700 years before Jesus came. And it says this, Who has believed our report? There are so many reports out there today, and the one report you need to not be listening to is the, is the report of the media. I've been saying it for two years, going to keep saying it over and over again. It is amazing still how many Americans are under the bondage and the deception and the lies of the media. They're not telling you the truth. They're not telling you the news. They're just telling you views, and they're giving you narratives. But I want you to know, you can always go to the Word of God and get the truth and get the answer. The reason why fewer and fewer people are believing the report of the Lord is because we're inundated constantly with the report of the world through the news and through our phones and all, all kinds of things. We're consulting the wrong source. We have got to consult the word of God. That builds a faith in us to receive all the blessings and the benefits that God has provided for us. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And then down in verse 4, he begins to prophesy about the suffering of the Messiah. And he says this, Surely he has borne our griefs, and he has carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. I want us to say it together. By his stripes we are healed. That has got to be something that's in your consciousness. It's got to be in your heart. It's got to be in your spirit. It's got to be in your mouth. Whatever in your heart is going to come out of your mouth. So we're not going to talk about how weak we are. We're not going to talk about how tired we are. We're not going to talk about how sick we are. We're going to talk about how good he is. And the answer comes from the Word of God. And by his stripes we are healed. Because the more we say these things, we're programming ourselves to live like that. The more we talk about being tired, I've been trying to eliminate the word tired from my life. You know, I, when I was growing up, I don't remember hearing uh, um, the words like anxiety and burnout and breakdown and that we're here today, right? You, you just, we didn't use that language. And today is so common, but what is it doing? It's, it's programming our brains to think like that. So every time we get tired or weary or come up against challenges, we can't deal with things. We just want to back away from them. But you know what? We've got to quit using that language. So I've been watching myself. I've been trying to eliminate saying, I'm tired. Because you know what? You'll start convincing. Your, your brain just starts programming yourself to think tired, be tired. So I've had my wife helping me not to use the T word. And she loves working on bread. So the other day we came home from Connect Group at the Flurries, and she said, you said tired three times. I'm like, you know what? Thank you for working on me. Thank you for working on me. But you, all men know it never goes in reverse. Let's work on Mary. It's like, can we work on you a little bit? I was like, I mean, dang, woman. I mean, just, 
But you know what? Thank you, because I don't. I'm, I'm elimin. I'm working on eliminating the T word. Why? Is that because you're tired? Yes, but that's okay. I'm not telling myself that. By his stripes I'm healed. The strength of God is in me to do everything God's called me to do. I'm going to do more and not less. I'm tired. Nothing screams weakness like that. Come on, guys. I'm talking to men in the house. Nothing screams le- something less than masculinity when we're always, I'm just exhausted. I'm tired. Come on. Amen? We're going to square up our shoulders, and we're going to do what we got to do and do the things God's called us to do, and God's going to strengthen us. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You don't believe it because you're too tired. What happened to that scripture? I'm too tired. I can't. But then we quote, who strengthens me. Well, then get the strength of God in you. The problem is we don't have the faith in the values we say we believe. You know, I, you could come to church and I could just pet on you and say, it's going to be okay. Or I can give you the word of God that's going to cause you to rise up in strength and faith, fight back, overcome, and prevail, and walk in the victory. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? So I'm working on me too. I, meant, I said we. I didn't say you. I said all of us. One of the things I'm working on is to eliminate the T word. But we need the word of God in our lives. We need to speak the word of God, and we need to believe the things we say we believe with faith and a fight in us. We've lost the fight in our, in our consciousness today. So Isaiah 53, he says the Messiah is going to come, and he's going to suffer. And he's going to suffer for people. He's going he's to suffer for his people, but it's for his people to be uh, uh, saved from their sins. It's going to be, he's going to suffer so that people can have victory over, uh, over sin and death in their lives. And so God laid upon Jesus all of our sin, but with that he laid upon Jesus all of our sicknesses, our griefs, and our pains, and our sorrows. There's nothing that anyone's going through today that Jesus hasn't already provided an answer for, and by his stripes, you're healed. A lot of people will say, well, that just means that he, he, we're healed spiritually. Yes, it does mean that, but it also means you're healed physically. It also means you're healed mentally. It also means you're healed emotionally. Whatever the issue is, by his stripes, you are healed. Verse 4, it says, he bore our griefs. That word griefs in the Hebrew means sicknesses. He even took your sicknesses to the cross because sin and sickness, are, they, they're, the, they're the same. They're, they spring out of the same place. The curse of sin that's in the world is also the curse of sickness and disease and death. But Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly. Jesus gives life. He doesn't take life And it says he carried our sorrows, and that word sorrows means pain. Whatever the pain is, emotional, spiritual, physical, he took your sicknesses and he took your pains, and guess what? By your stripes, by his stripes, you are healed. Jesus became a curse for us so that you and I could be redeemed from the curse of the law. Sickness, disease, and pain are a part of the curse of sin of this fallen world. And when Jesus took our sin and iniquities, he also took upon him the sicknesses, diseases, and the pains that result from sin. And we see here that Isaiah declared that by his stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Jesus took a beating so that we wouldn't have to, and by his stripes, we are healed. That's so good. Remember the Passover Seder meal that we did at Easter time? There's the lamb shake bone on the plate. When the Jews celebrate Passover, they do these things to commemorate God bringing them out of um, the Egypt, under the bondage of Egypt. So they have a bone, a lamb shank bone on the plate. And what that bone represents is how that the lamb was sacrificed and the lamb blood was shed, and they put the lamb's blood on the doorpost. And when the hand of death came in the land of Goshen that night of the Passover, the hand of death saw the blood of the lamb, and it passed over 
the home of the Israelites. We have to keep applying the blood of Jesus to our lives and homes and children and marriages and what, our finances, whatever it is. Why? Because it is a blood of protection and by his stripes we're healed and the hand of death and destruction must pass over. We have to begin to believe and fight with the verses we say we believe. So, God's instruction to Moses and the Israelites were, do not break a single bone in the lamb's body. Do you, that, that was a prophetic type of what Jesus would do on the cross as our Passover lamb. So what do we see? When Jesus was crucified, uh, it was coming up on the Sabbath and the Passover, and they needed the guy, him and the two men beside him to die so they could bury them, so they could make preparations for uh, the, pass, uh, the Passover and all. So uh, those of you who know crucifixion, you're hanging by the nails in your hand, and then you have the nails in your feet. So what happens is the weight of your body starts to pull you down, and your lungs collapse, so you're losing air. And so it's a l very long and painful, slow death because they would push up on their feet and, uh, to try to get air, but eventually, over time, they, they weary until they, they just suffocate. Well, they were in, the, in a hurry. They needed to hurry up and bury the body so they could make preparations for Passover. So they, the, the Sanhedrin, the, the rulers there, uh, the Jewish religious rulers, they go to Pilate and they say, could you break their legs so they, go, they, they can hurry up and die so that we can bury them and, uh, and move on? Well, they went out to the site where Jesus and the two men were on either side of him, and they broke the legs of the other two men, but when they got there, Jesus had already passed, and he didn't have any of his bones broken. Why? It was a prophetic symbol of what God told Moses to do in, in, in the original Passover. Don't break the bones. Come on. And Jesus is our eternal forever Passover lamb. Yeah. He took the beating that you, that, you don't, that you didn't have to take so that by his stripes you could be healed. Isn't that awesome? They put the blood on the doorpost, the top of the post and the two sides. And what does that make? It makes like a triangle. It shows like man reaching up to God. But notice in the crucifixion, you had the blood stains on the two sides where his hands were, and then the stains of blood where his feet were. It's like an inverse triangle. What is that? That's God reaching down to man. That's good right there. Come on. And you put those triangles together, and you have the Star of David, right? Anyway, that's something else. But notice verse 1. Who... It's one thing to, to get excited about, oh, praise God, by his stripes I'm healed. But notice verse 1 is two questions you have to answer in your life. Who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? If by his stripes is going to be a reality in our lives, then we have to answer these two questions. Do you believe the report? If you believe the report of the Lord... What does that do? It allows the arm of God to come into your life and manifest by his stripes. You're healed. Do you believe the report? That means, that means we have to have the word in us to the level that I believe this report more than any report. But you know what they say. You know, we, we never have figured out who they are. The proverbial they what the media says. And you know, the media will create hysteria to get you to go in line with what they, with the agenda. You know, you're, everybody gets panicked and scared. Remember when COVID came out? It's like, oh my God, toilet paper, why? I don't know, but everybody's getting it. <laughs> Apparently, if you wrap yourself in enough toilet paper, it's a COVID blocker, you know? But that's, that's it's like, what would it do? It's just mass hysteria. What does that show us? It shows us that how easily we're controlled and manipulated. But what we've got to do is believe this report. He took my pains and my sorrows, my iniquities, my griefs, my sicknesses, everything that I would ever need in this life. He took it to the cross and by his stripes, I am healed. That's the report I believe, done and finished. And if you believe that report, that's what allows God to come in with his mighty right arm or left. I think he's, the Bible talks about his right hand. Sorry, all the left-handed people. But he comes in with a strong arm, and he manifests the power of God 
to, to, for the, by his stripes to be a reality in your life. Amen? That's so good. So what is the report? The report is he took your sickness, he took your pains, he took your diseases, and by his stripes you're healed. So how do we build faith uh, in, in this in, in this. How do we answer that question, who's believed our report? By building our faith. Well, how do we build our faith? Well, we've got to keep hearing the word of God. Uh, Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, there's things that you tell your children over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Why? Because you want it to be ingrained in their consciousness. In, in school, what do they do? Repetitive learning to ingrain things in, in, in our consciousness. Well, the Word of God has to be repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated so that it's not, a, it's not just a second nature, it's a first nature. You got to hear the Word of God over and over and over. Why do you see America turning to such secularism and crazy things? Is because more Americans are leaving church today than ever before. And the more they believe the messaging of the world, then the more they're going to believe in all this insanity that we're seeing. How are we going to turn America around? We need first Americans to go back to church. And somebody might say, well, you're a pastor. Of course you'd say that. You know what? You need the Word of God over and over and over and over and over. And you don't just need it just by listening, you know, you need it in your own life, in reading the Word of God, listening to the Word of God, hearing the Word of God, but you need it in a sense where you have faith partners and fellow believers that are encouraging you as you're together walking in the Word of God. That's why the connect groups are so important. Why? Because it's an intimate setting where you're studying the Word of God together and you're hearing it and hearing it and hearing it and hearing it. So it becomes a part of your nature. So every time something comes up in your life, you're not going to say, I'm tired. I can't deal with this right now. Oh my God. Yes, you can. You can deal with it because by his stripes you're healed. You're an overcomer. This is the victory that we have. Our faith in yeah. those things are coming out of you. Amen. Jesus said, You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. He didn't say the truth will set you free. There can be truth out there that you don't know. It's you knowing the truth that sets you free. Amen. Mark chapter 5, verse 25 through 28 says, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years, and you thought you had problems. So you had a bad couple weeks at work. Okay, 12 years. She's had a flow of blood. Losing blood, hemorrhaging blood, and, it can't, and, and she can't stop it. She suffered many things from many physicians. She'd spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, notice this, when she heard, where does faith come? Hearing. Hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Well, she heard. So it's a faith builder in what she heard about Jesus' ministry, about the healings and the miracles. And she came behind him in the crowd and she touched his garment for she did what? Said. She heard and she said. Come on, somebody. She heard and she said. You've got to start speaking the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. That comes out of the, comes out of uh, every word that comes out of the mouth of God. We live by the word of God, so we hear and we speak it. If you hear it enough, it's going to get into your spirit, and it's going to come out of your mouth. She said, "If I only may touch his clothes, I will be made well." So she heard about Jesus, and she said to herself, "You know, sometimes you have to speak to your own self." You know, we live in a time where everybody's complaining about everyone else, and they're tweeting about everybody else, and complaining about, but you know what? You need to work on you, and we need to work on us. Amen? You know, people are like, we need to transform society. No, we don't. We need to transform each individual. Each individual needs to transform himself, and that's how you transform society. You're welcome. It's the truth, right? And so we see that uh, she said to herself, and she reached out and touched the hem of his garment. And power left Jesus. We talked about it last week. That word power, virtue, means is the Greek word dynamon. It's where we get our English word dynamite. And the power of God went into her body. But how did it happen? Through faith. She, she heard and she said. So today when you walk out of here, you need to, after hearing the word of God, you're going to be immediately confronted with a different message. You're going to be, you know, Satan is a god of this world. That means that 
He is the God of lies. The, Jesus said he's the father of lies, that lying is his native tongue. So the moment you walk out into this world, you're going to be met with an environment that is pregnant with doubt and disbelief, lies and deception. The moment you walk out and you go into this world, you're going to be met with it. You're going to live in it. Every, that's why it's so important to have the word of God, to have church in your life. Why? Because you spend you know, all these many hours a week in the environment of lies, deception, because he's a father of lies. That's why you have to confront it with the word of God every day, every day, every day, every day. We see blind Bartimaeus. He was in, uh, the Bible says that he uh, had heard of Jesus of Nazareth. He was, Jesus was coming back through Jericho. And this blind man who was a beggar, he heard a commotion of the crowd around him, and he asked, what, what is, what's, what's going on? And they said, it's Jesus of Nazareth. And he had heard about Jesus' ministry and the miracles and the healing. And so when he heard that Jesus was passing by, Bartimaeus started shouting out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the crowd, people in the crowd tried to quiet him because he's a blind beggar. He, he, he's not, he had no right to disturb people. You only get what people give you but he knew that his life could change because Jesus had passed, was passing by. And so he believed in his heart. How do you know he believed? Because I believe the Holy Spirit revealed something to him. Because notice he didn't say, Jesus of Nazareth, Rabbi. He said, Jesus, son of David. And the term son of David was from the Old Testament where God promised David that from his lineage would come the Messiah. And we know that the term son of David became a, a, a title that was reserved only for the Messiah. So when people use that term son of David, that was, uh, they, they were referring to the Messiah. And so when people heard him saying son of David, they would thought it was blasphemy because that's him saying, acknowledging that Jesus was the Messiah. But I, the Spirit of God revealed that to him. Here's a blind man who could see what other people couldn't see. But that was an expression of his faith. What did he do? He had heard and he said, Jesus, son of David. You know, Satan wants you to sit there and be quiet and take it. Right? He wants you to believe the lie. And they peddle the lie so much, they make it sound like it's the truth. So that when you speak the truth or have an obvious question, oh, you're just spreading misinformation. I mean, you know what? Shut up. This is not misinformation. I saw a young man do a, a, a young man the other day do a video podcast, and his young man that I've known since he was a teenager. Today he's a young adult, very successful. But to see what he's become from what he once was on fire for God and today out into a weird land. And he was doing in his video podcast topic was about Jesus and the Bible is a myth. And I'm like, my gosh, how far has he fallen? Why? Because you, you just you get in the world and they just tell you so many lies. This is not a myth. It's not a legend. Paul told Timothy in the last days men would turn to myths. But we keep preaching the word of God. Amen? So he heard about Jesus. Are, are, is anyone being blessed today? Yeah. I mean, I, you guys are looking at me like Mary does. It's like, apparently it's work on Pastor Brad Day. Okay, I'm, so I'm self-therapeuting up here. Come on. Do we believe the word of God? Do we believe it? Then we're going to believe it all the time. It's the truth that sets you free. So he heard and he shouted out. And when Jesus heard somebody saying, Son of David, it stopped him in his tracks. He said, Oh, somebody knows who I am. And, and, then, they, and then they said, Call the man to me, bring the man to me. And so they had the blind man go to Jesus. And he was wearing a beggar's cloak. That, it was a government issued, meaning that you had to have government permission to, have, to get the alms. He threw off the beggar's cloak that day. Why? Because he knew his life was about to change. His health and his financial future isn't going to change. He wouldn't be dependent on other people any longer. He would make a life for himself. He threw off the cloak, and he started making his way to Jesus. And Jesus is like, over here. He's like, oh, yeah, over here. I don't mean that lightly, but I mean, come on, it's a blind guy. That's funny. 
right? And here's the thing that's even crazier. Jesus is like, what do you want? I'm like, come on, like the guy doesn't, like Jesus didn't know that he's blind? He said, why did he ask him what he wanted? Because you have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Faith works when you believe and speak it. Believe and speak it. He said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And immediately his eyes were open. You got to keep believing and speaking. And if you'll start believing it and speaking it more than you speak what you feel and see, guess what? You'll start reprogramming your brain to tell your body you're healthy, you're strong, you're capable, you're able, you can overcome, you can rise to the challenge. You'll start becoming a victorious person and not a religious person that quotes a scripture that you don't know if you really believe. Galatians 3, 5 through 6. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you works the miracles among you. Does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? As Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Notice that. God supplies the Spirit and the Spirit works the miracles. God supplies the Spirit and wherever the Holy Spirit is, there's a miracle waiting to happen. Wherever the Spirit of God is, a healing is waiting to happen. But here's the thing, just because the Spirit of God is present doesn't mean you're gonna get the healing or the miracle because it comes by what? The hearing of faith. He said, look, he said, you guys have turned from the gospel to another gospel that ain't a gospel. He said, because you've gone back to this religious rules. He said, you, you, you were born again because you heard by the hearing of faith. You put your faith in the gospel truth and of what you heard. Now you're turning it into something else. And so he says, he who supplies the Spirit works the miracles. And what happens? Because of the faith. And so I want to encourage you today, our faith has to keep rising and rising to believe God. You had to have faith to be saved, did you not? Why does nobody ever question that? People understand it's elementary. We had to have faith to be saved. And how did you how did you receive salvation? You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. Well, guess what? You have to have faith to receive your healing. You have to have faith to receive your blessing, your promotion, your deliverance. Every other thing you're going to receive from God is by faith. And how does faith work? You believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth. It's not Christian hocus pocus. It's how faith works. Remember when the centurion came to Jesus and said, Lord, my servant's sick unto death. And Jesus said, come on, let's go to your house. He said, Lord, you don't have to go to my house. Just speak a word and my servant will be healed. Isn't that powerful? Just think if you start changing the atmosphere of our homes with what we say in the word of God. It would revolutionize our homes. Amen? Transforming the environment. You, know, you could transform your work by the things you say about it. I don't like the people I work with. I don't like that. We can trans. Come on. We're not going to speak like that. We're going to speak the word of God over it. I I promise you I'm about to close. Romans 4, 19 through 21. Notice what uh, Paul said about Abraham's testimony. He says, and not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that he, what, what he had promised, he was also able to perform. I want you to notice this. Most people, when they go through a protracted struggle, they grow weaker in faith. Abraham grew stronger in faith. What was the promise? You're going to be the father of many nations. But his wife, Sarah, was barren. He didn't have a child. Do you know how crazy that is? God steps in and says, Abram. At the time, his name was Abram, which means exalted father. You know, he had to be, he had to be really self-conscious of that. He introduced himself as exalted father, and he was fatherless. He had no children, right? And so God comes in, I'm going to bless you, and you're going to be a blessing, and you're going to be the father of many nations. I said, wow, that's something for a guy with no kids. Then later, God changes his name to Abraham, which means father of many nations. But you know what? He didn't consider the deadness. At that point in time, he was 100. He didn't consider the deadness of, uh, of his own body. Nor now, now Sarah's 90. She's always been barren. And now God's saying in a year from now, your, your wife's going to conceive. What did he do? 
Now, I don't know if I'll believe that. It's just that, that I, I just, I, I don't think that can happen. God said, yes, it's going to happen. I'm changing your name from Abram to Abraham, father of many. And he did not consider his own body nor the deadness of Sarah's womb, but he was strengthened in faith because he, 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 he believed in what God had promised he would do. Do you believe that by his stripes you're healed? Do you believe that by his stripes you're healed? We're not going to grow weak in faith. We're going to go strong in faith because we know that our God is faithful to do what he's promised, and he already did it 2,000 years ago. Come on. Amen. Remember, in num- remember when the snakes broke out in the camp of Israel, and the, Lord, and, and the Lord told Moses to take a bronze serpent and put it on a pole, and whoever looks on the pole will be healed of the, of the bite of the viper. It says, the Lord said, to, this is Numbers 21, 8, and the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone that looks at it will live. So just as the children of Israel kept gazing on the bronze serpent for the healing, their healing in the wilderness, we too must continue to look on the cross of Jesus, believing that by his stripes we're healed. Amen? Amen. So I just want to encourage you that in this, that we cannot lose our confidence. we got to keep gazing on, into the Word of God. we got to keep looking to the cross of Jesus, and by his stripes, we're healed. By his stripes, we're healed. Amen? You know, today in America, we're medicated for everything. You know, we're medicated for everything. And, and it's like, I don't know. At some point, though, I'm not telling you to get off your meds. <laughs> Do not go out of this room saying I said that. But what I'm saying, for some of you all, I'm like, pills are good. I'm teasing. You guys are a tough crowd today. I'm just trying to make you laugh. But listen, we have to at some point not just look at our prescriptions the whole time. We still have to gaze onto the cross. Look to the cross. Look to the word. Are you guys with me? You've got to look to the word. From where we gotta look from the word of God where our help comes from. We gotta look to the word of God where our healing comes from. We gotta speak it over our life, change what we say. Hebrews 10, 35, 36 says, Do not cast away your confidence. Don't cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you've done the will of God, you may have the promise. Look, we need some Americans need some fight back. We need some, American Christians need some faith and some fight in us. Amen? So we can't cast away our confidence in God. You know, a lot of people, when they're prayed for, for healing, and they walk away disappointed saying that, well, uh, 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 they thought they'd get a healing maybe immediately. But you know what? Either way, we have to keep our faith in God. Sometimes we allow our disappointment is the result of walking away grumbling, not getting healed, instead of walking away rejoicing in the healing after we've been prayed for. Right? Well, I still feel it. Well, you know, I'm going to keep giving God praise because we touched and agreed, and I'm going to keep giving God praise for my complete and total healing. People want to get well first and then give God thanks. we got to give God thanks in advance. Remember when Jesus... Well, when, he, when he raised Lazarus from the dead, it says, before he said, Lazarus, come forth, the Bible says Jesus gave thanks to God. Then said Lazarus, he did not give thanks to God. After Lazarus came out of the grave, he gave, he gave, him, he gave God praise and thanks before Lazarus came out of the grave. That's what we got to do. Keep giving God praise and thanks. Praise and thanks, speaking the word, and by his stripes we're healed. And it's going to manifest in our lives. Amen. Praise God. So, anyway, just want to encourage you in that. Can, can I, uh, I have five minutes left. Can I just share a couple things with you guys? Yes. That you're going to love me? Yes. Promise? Yes. Promise. Because, yes. you know, in the Now Hiring series, you know, we just told the truth, bless God. And so I'd encourage everybody to go back to watch every single message of those. But... You know, you got up and you came to church today. You need to hear the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me, God, and you. We, as the Christians, cannot just value healing. We also need to value health. Amen? 
We can't just value, well, he's my healer. Yes, he is. Thank God he is. And by his stripes, I'm healed. We need to value health. First of all, in our, in our, in our physical health, we have to take care of ourselves. One of the things that COVID showed us is what? Man, you got to take care of yourself. What did it do? It exposed health weaknesses in people, right? And that, that needs to be an alarm to us that it ain't the toilet paper. <laughs> we need to take care of ourselves. Can I get an amen from somebody? You know, I saw this the other day, and this was amazing, that, you know, the average American today has 17% more body fat than the average American in 1974. Isn't that crazy? What does that tell you? It tells you that the processed foods that we eat, the carbs, the sodas, the fast foods, the everything that, we, that we're eating, what's it doing? It's causing us to have diseases. And you don't think for a second that the food industry and big pharma aren't partners. Right? Just think about it. You ever notice how they always tell you about you need to have less salt and you need to have less sodium? But they never talk to you about having less sugar, do they? Why? Because sugar sells. Sugar sells, right? And guess what? Sugar's addictive. You know that a sodas have the same, they, they, they give off the same dopamine to your brain that alcohol does? Right? And so people can get addicted. You, you, you start drinking. It's like the doctor, when I went to the heart, I told you guys last week, went to the heart doctor, and he told me that, well, for one, I had to lower my coffee intake. I was like, get behind me, Satan. For I know you lie. <laughs> right? Try to get off coffee and you're like, the shakes. It's like I'm in real, Pastor Brad's in rehab for what? Coffee addiction. And it's like, geez, I had to lower my coffee intake. It's like, my goodness. But, you know, the average American, though, we eat 14 to 21 times a day when it comes between our meals and our snacks. We need to, we need to, we need to thank God for his healing power. But come on, we got to realize we have a responsibility to take care of ourselves, eat better. We need less processed foods and carbohydrates and starches and all those things. And we need more fiber and more protein in our diets. Just saying. Come on. Amen? And we need more exercise in our lives. Because back in the day, people weren't as sedentary as we are today. We sit more in front of computers and on our phones and behind a desk. We got to get it. Your body was made to move. Amen? Do you guys love me? I'm, I'm just trying to help you. You're going to feel better, and you're going, to have less, you're going to have fewer issues. Praise God, as we get older, we can't eat like we used to eat, and we can't eat as much as we used to eat. I went into a coffee shop the other day, and they had this gigantic <laughs> chocolate chip cookie sitting right there in the case in front, by the register. And I was like, oh, my God, you people are the devil. And the guy goes, that's why they're there. I'm like, he knew it too. I'm like, man shall not live by chocolate cookies alone. <laughs> but we need to take care of ourselves. Come on, church. Amen? And here's, I just want to touch on this really quickly. One of the things that we're seeing today also is the mental health issues in America. Depression, anxiety, fear, disorders, suicide, are all on the rise. One in five Americans have some type of mental health issue, and it's even higher among younger people. Now, historically, many mental health disorders have been the result of, of trauma. You know, like PTSD, you soldiers at war, right? You know, they go to war and they see things that God didn't intend your human brain to see, but in a fallen world, these things become issues, right? So they go to war and they see and experience things that gives them a post-traumatic stress disorder. Or you, know, you see people have suffered rape or a sexual assault. That's a trauma on a person's life that can lead to these things. Uh, we see abuse and other traumatic experiences. But today, we have a lot of people dealing with these issues and they haven't even had those traumas in their life, right? It's just because... because uh, it, 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 and fortunately, I, I think we've seen these issues rise today because they're more acceptable to have those things, and it's like they're focused on. You know, we, we live in a, in a culture today that's so victimization that it's like everyone has to be a victim of something. And please listen to me. I'm not trying to minimize 
uh, what people are going through in their life. But again, if we tell ourselves certain things, then it'll start programming us to believe these things, right? Um, so this is why we see such a spike in anxiety and depression. And just by people having to deal with stresses and pressures of life. You know, I, I, people say, well, I just need less stress in my life. Well, well then what are you going to do? S- go home and live in your room and avoid human contact? And yeah, I mean, that's not reality. If you're, if you're wanting to do anything in this world, you're gonna ha- it's going to come with some stress and it's going to come with some pressure. But as Americans, we don't have the pressure that most people have around the world who are living on less than $1 a day. That's pressure. But we're programming ourselves and the next generation to be weak and to think weak. In World War II, Japan bombed Pearl Harbor. What did, what did America do? The greatest, what they call the greatest generation. They rose up in might and strength and they defeated the Nazis in Europe and the empire of Japan and Asia, they won World War II on two hemispheres. And today, what do we have a generation doing? Oh my God, somebody doesn't like me, they disagree with me, and I, I gotta have a safe space. Really? Come on. We need some faith again. And it's not just the world, we need it in the church. We need some faith, we need some fight. And not every time we have to deal with something, it triggers us and we have to retreat and back away from it. Why? Because isolation is what creates a disorder. Remember Moses. He grew up in Egypt, in Pharaoh's home. You don't know this in scripture, but if you study Jewish history, he was highly educated. He was a military commander had had many successful military campaigns. He was, Moses was an absolute stud. Then he killed the Egyptian, then he ran in fear, and he spent 40 years out in the desert by himself taking care of his father-in-law's sheep. And what happened in that isolation of 40 years? Lacking confidence, insecure, developed a stuttering. He started developing disorders as a result of retreating in isolation. So when he saw the fiery, the, the fiery bush that was on fire and God spoke to him, he said, I want you to go back to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. He's like, oh, but, but, I, but, 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 but I can't. Why? Because the st- stutter. We didn't stutter before. But isolation created this disorder, lack of confidence, insecurity. And God's like, oh, I'm sorry. You stutter now? The call of God is the call of God. And when the call of God is in you, guess what it can do? It can bring things into order and empower you to overcome. I'm not trying to sound like I'm not compassionate, but either we believe the word of God or we don't. And God has given us the victory. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. How can we celebrate? I mean, because you have challenges in life, because people don't like you, because you have some pressures and stresses at work, because uh, this may not have happened, or you got rejected, you failed. Guess what? It's the real world. It's been happening forever. But the righteous fall seven times, and on the eighth time, they go find a safe space. No, the righteous fall seven times, and they get back up, because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm not gonna quit, I'm not gonna retreat, I'm not going to back down. I'm going to move forward. Joseph, you think you have it bad because you had a couple of bad? (laughs) They said something I didn't like. That's okay. There's things that Mary says I don't like, especially when it's work on me day. (laughs) But I still love her. I know you all like marriage counseling. (laughs) But come on, it's life. You got to deal. Mom and dads, if we don't strengthen our children, imagine how weak our grandchildren are going to be. Come on. You got to deal. You got to square off your shoulders. You got to straighten your back, and you walk in there with dignity and strength, and you conquer. You dust yourself off, and you conquer. How can we celebrate Joseph being in prison? It didn't break him. 
If people don't make you, then people can't break you. Don't let yourself be broken. God makes you. God busts him out of prison. He had to deal. Why do we celebrate Daniel in the lion's den? He had to deal with that. But God brought him out of the lion's den. And don't even get me started about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You talk about peer pressure, everybody bow. Three dudes stood up. You don't think they didn't? St- we live in a culture today that wants you to yeah. do what we tell you, say what we tell you to say, believe what we tell you to believe, and if you say something different, we're going to silence you and throw you off social media. Oh, really? I don't want to get canceled. Come on. They're like, you're going to get burned. They said, well, we're going to get burned, but we're not going to bow to your idol. That's pressure. Don't tell me you have anxiety. What do you do? You, you might be dealing with something that makes you anxious. That's not anxiety. Again, there's a scripture for it. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, give thanks to God and prayer and the peace of God will guard your heart and mind. What does it tell us as Christians? We're not spending up time in prayer. We're not spending up time in the word. So we retreat in our insecurities. David, he was under pressure one time so bad from Saul that he had to go back into the Philistine camp to survive. And guess where he went? To Gath (laughs) is where Goliath was from. He actually had to go to Gath where he killed Goliath from Gath. He goes back to, and the Bible says he dribbled on his beard and acted mentally challenged. Why? So that they wouldn't, because in those days they believed insanity was contagious. So they're like, get him away from me. But he had to do that to stay alive because Saul was about to kill him. That's, pre- that's real pressure. Yes. You don't know what I've been through. I mean, look, we've all been, everybody's been through things. But you know what? I, I, those poor little babies that were in that school in Texas where they saw their friends shot and killed and their blood was all over them and they had no help, that's trauma. The pressures of life and having to to face it, that's not trauma. That's just called life. But you have an answer. It's the word of God that always causes you to triumph. Do you still love me? I love you too. I'm just telling you the truth. Don't run. Quit running. Keep fighting. Stand in faith. Look at Paul. My goodness. How many times was Paul beaten? How many times was he stoned? What did he do? He got up and he went to the next town and kept preaching. He kept preaching. We've got to grow strong in faith and we need some fight. We need some fight. And so I try to tell my boys, hey, you're in sports, you're going to fight. You're in your schoolwork, you're going to fight to succeed. In life, you're going to fight. Come on, we need, some, especially some young men in this world today, that have strong men. Amen? Come on, dads. We're growing weaker. We're growing weaker. There's just a, you know, it's like even in church, there's just a weak spirit over in, in, our, in our nation. And it's on purpose. And they want to make you weak. Why? Because the weaker you become, the more controllable you are. And you'll just go along with everything. Well, I just can't do anything about it. Uh, and so it, it just creates this spirit of weakness. And, it's, it, 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 t- it comes into the church. And it comes into our own homes. And it comes into our own hearts. And it comes into our own lives. And so instead of saying that we're more than conquerors, I can overcome. I can face this challenge. What do we do? We retreat and we fall back. So I want to encourage you, quit Start eliminating certain words from your vocabulary. You're not going to break down. You're going to break through. Come on. I'm not burning out. I'm I'm refueling. (laughs) Amen? I'm not retreating. I'm advancing. I'm not failing. I'm succeeding. I don't have anxiety. I'm just... Dealing with a situation, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to overcome it, and I'm going to have victory. you, you got to start taking 
And I don't know if you've heard it today, but quit saying you're tired. Because why? You'll start thinking tired, and it'll make you physically weak, and then you'll start absolving yourself from the responsibilities, and you'll start retreating backwards. Why? Because you're too tired. We're going to be victorious and be bold. They told Daniel, you can't pray. You better not pray. You'll get thrown in the lion's den. The dude so bold opened up his window and prayed so they could see him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if you don't bow, you're going to get thrown in the fire. Well, God's going to deliver us if we get thrown in the fire. (laughs) But then they said this, but there's a chance he might not. And even if he might not, we'd rather be burned. I'm telling you what you're going through in your life, you can make it. What you're going through, really, I know it seems big, it's a light affliction compared to that. You don't have disorder. I speak that off your life right now. Come on. You do not have a disorder. God is bringing it into order. You do not have depression. We speak that spirit off you right now in Jesus' name. I speak a spirit of anxiety off of you right now in the name of Jesus and by his stripes you're healed. What does it say in Isaiah 53, 5? The chastisement of our peace was on him. He took that grief, that sorrow, that anxiety, that pain. He took that trauma and by his stripes you're healed mentally. By his stripes you're healed emotionally. And you have the strength of the Spirit of God and the Word of God to get back up, dust yourself off, and move forward in strength and confidence and victory. Can I get an amen from somebody as you stand on your feet today? Praise God. That's who we are. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? That's who we are. We're strong and we're mighty. We're strong and we're mighty. That's who we are. We walk in strength and power. We all deal with things. Look, I know we all reach breaking points in our lives, but we, what we operate with strength. We're not going to break down. We're going to break through in Jesus' name. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. Power, love, sound mind. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. Power, love, and sound mind. Come on, we don't have depression and anxiety, we have victory. We have victory. Can I encourage you not to keep claiming it as, well, I have this, and I have that. Is this blessing anybody today? I, 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 look, please, I don't want anybody to get offended. I'm not here to offend. I'm here to, we're here to challenge these things, challenging in my life, you know? You're like, no, I, I'm, you have to shake yourself and say, no, I don't believe that. I believe the report. Lord, I'm not going to break down. I'm going to break through this. Don't you just feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit? You feel peace that comes in the room when the Spirit of God comes? It's just peace. Guess what's the, what's the Holy Spirit saying? You're more than a conqueror. You're going to overcome. You're going to succeed. You're an heir and a joint heir with Jesus. You've been elevated, and you're seated at the right hand of God. You're going to overcome. You're going to have victory. You're not going to break down. You're not going to break down. Come on, you're not going to burn out and fall down, you're going you're gonna to burn bright and break through. You know, I want us to pray last thing. about. There's so many pastors today that are quitting the ministry because they're burned out. You feel like they're used up. Maybe they feel like they're not as useful as they once were, or maybe they're not getting the results, and, it's just, and they're battling discouragement. You know, I, I, I'm a third-generation pastor. I just have a heart for pastors. And Lord, I just lift up every pastor in Mobile right now in Jesus' name. Those pastors that are struggling, God. Some of them even thought of quitting. God, I just pray you strengthen them in the ministry right now. You strengthen their resolve today. Lord, God, I just thank you that, Lord, a spirit of joy. Lord, Paul, the, the, the word says that Paul said, I am thankful that the Lord counted me faithful and he put me in the ministry. And I pray, God, today that they don't lose the joy of the ministry and the call that you put on their life, that they remain thankful for the call and that you give them the power to remain faithful in it. 
And God, I pray that, Lord God, you will cause their ministries to be fruitful and to prosper and that they'll, they'll walk in the joy of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Isn't God good? Can you give him a hand clap of praise? I love you so much. And I don't want you to, I don't want you to take in the wrong heart anything I said. I say everything in love. And then nothing I said today, I haven't already said to my own children. You're going to be strong men. You're not going to have anxiety. You're not going to have fear and depression. You're going to break through. And that's what we're going to be. And that's what we're going to do. Amen? And I tell of our surge people, you're wearing, some of you guys are looking good with your surge. You're going to surge. Amen? You're not going to surge backwards. You're going to surge forward in God's power and grace. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you for sharing the ministry of Surge Church with your friends and family and on social media. We love you and cannot wait to see you. Stay connected together. We will surge.